Tonight, Twitter earnings worth tweeting about, a health insurance company gets hacked, and copyright lawyers show they have absolutely no sense of humor. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 269 for Thursday, February 5th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015. lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Twitter announced quarterly earnings this afternoon. Earnings were up, but user growth was down. This has been one of the most highly anticipated earnings reports for the company, with a lot riding on CEO Dick, Dick Costolo's shoulders. And it's fair to say that investors are getting a little impatient with the company. There are rumors that Costolo is on his way out. And ahead of the, uh, this afternoon's earnings call, The Verge reported a leaked memo from Costolo regarding the way Twitter deals with trolls. Although it's surprising to read that a CEO thinks his company sucks and that he's ashamed, I think we can all agree that Twitter could do more to combat the rampant sexism, racism, and overall meanness on the network. We'll talk more about that with our guest Danny Sullivan a little later in the show. The, but first, the second largest health insurance company in the United States was hacked last week. The breach exposed the social security numbers, birth dates, addresses, and other dates for his other data for as many as 80 million customers. Insurance company Anthem is working with both the FBI and security firm Mandiant on tracking down the perpetrators. Bloomberg sources say the Chinese government is the leading suspect in the hack. Note that the attack affected the customers of Anthem sub-brands like Anthem Blue Cross, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Amerigroup, Caremore, Unicare, HealthLink, and others. You can find a link to the whole list on our website. The company says they believe that no medical-related information was compromised. Look out, Apple Watch. The 1980s are breathing down your neck. The ailing switch watch company Swatch announced today that they'll be releasing a smartwatch at the same time the Apple Watch is set to hit the market this spring. Swatch CEO Nick Hayek says the watch will have mobile payment capabilities. It will work with Windows and Android, and it will connect to the Internet without having to be charged. Really? How will it do anything? To be fair, Bloomberg Business is reporting that Swatch has a brand that's been making touchscreen watches since 1999, and the company already sells versions with altimeters, 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 compasses, and sensors that can track a diver's descent. Well, I can't wait to see what they do with a watch that doesn't need to be charged. We talked a little bit earlier about Twitter, but Twitter's earnings and the Dick Costola's acknowledgement of the troll problem weren't the only big news out of the company today. This morning, Twitter announced that they'd reached another deal with Google that will allow tweets to show up in Google searches in real time. We've invited search expert Danny Sullivan of Search Engine Land to help us understand what this means. Welcome, Danny. Hi, thanks for having me. So how is this deal going to work? Um, well, Twitter will be supplying um, Google with what's called its fire hose of data. This is literally every tweet that it gets. We got new stats that came out today that um, there are 6,000 tweets a minute happening. And so they'll, they'll just provide it out to Google so that Google can provide it into its uh, web index and make it easier for us to find things that people have tweeted and find things that people have tweeted much faster than we've been able to find them on Google before. So this isn't the first deal that they've had. Uh, what happened to the last deal? Uh, so they did have a deal that ran from 2009 to 2011. Uh, Google loved that deal so much they built an entire service called Google Real-Time Search around it. And you could do these dedicated searches just to find tweets as, long as, as well as some other uh, information. And then it just collapsed. And it seems as if Twitter wasn't feeling like it was getting the value out of the deal. From some reports I was reading again today, uh, there was some, some updates on this in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, plus some perhaps uh, feeling threatened by Google having just launched Google Plus and trying to you know, compete with it. Um, none of the companies ever really said what happened, but it, it just went away. And, and it went away so quickly and so dramatically that Google ended up having to close its entire real-time search service uh, within days of the uh, deal ending. And now we see that Google Plus isn't really a threat to Twitter. 
Well, it's interesting. Uh, Google Plus isn't a threat to Twitter. And at the same time, Twitter, I think, largely has come back to Google saying, hey, you know what? We really need you. Uh, because Google, uh, sorry, Twitter had done an experiment um, at the end of last year where they tried to make it possible for them to get more visitors from Google by, by basically doing search engine optimization, doing a better job of making sure that they could be crawled. And they found that they got 10 times as many logged out users as they were getting before. So they definitely saw the value of Google traffic and realized, hey, we want a lot more of that. So, um, you know, Google's social aspirations didn't go the way that it might have thought, and Twitter may have also found that we kind of still need Google in a lot of ways. Right. So now if I have a Twitter, I do have a Twitter account, I can see Google tweets. But if what if you don't have, if you're not a Twitter user, can you still see tweets in the Google searches? Oh, yeah. And then, in fact, you know, it's, it's important to understand that we've always had tweets, even without the first deal being in place and even after the first deal ended. Um, Twitter, go, uh, Google goes out and it crawls the entire web. And if it's public, it'll get it. And lots of these tweets, you know, they're public. <clears throat> Excuse me. The difficulty is that Google simply cannot get all the tweets without Twitter's help unless it actually really wants to crash Twitter because to, to get 6,000 tweets a minute, it's having to constantly be going out there and hammering on the Twitter website to pull all of those in. So, you know, you don't have to have a Twitter account to see tweets. Um, this doesn't mean that we haven't had tweets in Google before, but it does mean that if you do searches on Google probably in the next few months when they finally get all this into place, um, there's a better chance you'll find some of those breaking tweets tweets or the popular tweets coming up uh, almost as soon as they happen rather than you may having to wait five minutes, 10 minutes or an hour or even longer before they appear. Right. Because when I'm looking for news during the day, I find the most updated stuff on Twitter, not on Google. Exactly. And that's part of the value that Twitter brings to Google. You know, there's there's an earthquake. Twitter will tell you right away when it happens. Everybody knows. Or there's some sort of a breaking news story. A lot of times it's happening and showing up on Twitter before it's getting into some of the mainstream sources. And so this is one of the advantages that Google will gain uh, by bringing some of this Twitter data back in. So, so how does advertising fit into this? Are they, um, are they do, wh why is tw Twitter doing, what are they getting out of this? Twitter, Twitter's uh, CEO Dick Costello said today, basically eyeballs, that they recognize that this will bring more people to their, their content where they can try to show them a lot of what they talk about, the logged out experience, show them interesting content, entice them to perhaps become Twitter users. Um, and of course, it'd be Twitter ads that's on some of that content as well. So it really, Twitter getting eyeballs out of this. Right. So now this story was kind of dwarfed a little bit by the leaked memo that we talked about earlier um, about trolls. Uh, how do you think Twitter can control the problem they have right now with trolls? Well, a lot of the stuff, you know, it's just so blatantly obvious. You, know, you, you see some of these reports and you see some of the things that people are, are being hit with and it, it shouldn't take someone to actually go through and report some of these things to get rid of it. So, you know, certainly cleaning up some of the obvious stuff without waiting around for someone to report is one thing that they can do. Um, acting faster on the reports that come in might be another thing, and maybe they can put together some algorithms to better flag what, what's potentially really abusive stuff. There, you know, there, there's patterns that they can spot. Um, so, you know, that's, those are probably steps that they should be doing because until now, I think they've really taken a wait and see who tells us about something. And I think especially, you know, if you're someone who's being hit by hundreds or thousands of abusive tweets as people can have happen, you're probably more likely to just give up and not just give up on trying to report, but just give up on, on bothering with Twitter. Right. So, I mean, it's not just a wait and see. I mean, it, it's in the past, it's been a wait and see and then report and then you wait and then you wait and then they get around to it. Yeah. And, and you know, you when you, you look at some of these horrifying tweets and you're thinking that shouldn't be a wait and see thing it you, you don't need a, a an in, intensive judge and jury and appeals process to understand that account should be shut down right now right and and that it should be acted upon in that way right you know yeah i mean it, it, it's amazing he didn't say this like after what happened with robin williams daughter i mean i think his his uh comments were in response to an npr this american life report there was a a comedian who um did a story about how she was abused on Twitter and just basically said, Twitter needs to do more. So I'm glad he finally heard, but I'm surprised it took him that long. Yeah. Uh, so you were on Twitter's earnings call this afternoon. Um, what are the most important takeaways from that? Well, aside from the Google deal, which, you know, was, wasn't even mentioned formally as part of the call, the big takeaway is probably that you can see Twitter is doing a big emphasis on 
stop worrying about the user figures, start looking at our revenue numbers because their user figures were nothing great. And in fact, there was almost this horrifying moment where they explained that they lost 4 million users because of iOS 8, which sounds odd, right? Because being integrated in iOS 8, you would think, woohoo, we're going to make more people. But they found some bug with Safari that meant they had 3 million people that really weren't as active as they thought. They went away. And then they probably lost another million people because when they upgraded to iOS 8, they didn't bother to... Uh, either download the Twitter app again if they lost it or bother to log back in and start using it again. So, you know, the user numbers were not exciting. But the revenue numbers, you know, they've had dramatic growth from this quarter, from last quarter, very dramatic and some dramatic, you know, and, and significant uh, growth in the quarters before that. So I think that the story that you're going to hear them tell throughout this year will be, you know, stop thinking about the users, start looking at our revenue numbers because the users do not necessarily equate to our success in making money. All right. So you cover search engines. Is there any, what's the biggest news coming up? Anything that you can tell us about that's coming up in search that we should know about? Oh, well, you know, I mean, uh, certainly the, the, the news out of what, what come together with Twitter and Google is, is very exciting. Um, you know, another change that was exciting this week was that they, uh, Google's recently done some changes so that if you do searches for like, uh, I think Love Quotes is an example of this that brings it up. Uh, you're getting better links over to some third-party sites uh, to whereas in the past, Google has been kind of taking content from these sites and not directing you as well to them. So I, I think they're looking at ways to kind of get the balance back. Another example, was if you search for like WordPress downloads, uh, I believe you got a big image for the WordPress site and a big link over to where the download site area was. Well, thank you so much, Danny. That was Danny Sullivan from Search thank Engine you. Land. Thanks for coming to talk to us. Thanks for having me. Thanks. And you can uh, see Danny is on Twitter at Danny Sullivan. Coming up, GoPro announces earnings and Apple finally puts iPhoto to rest. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. It's already February. What are you waiting for? Invest in yourself this year. Learn something new with a free 10-day trial to lynda.com. lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world. It has over 4,500 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, business, Excel, WordPress, Photoshop, and a whole lot more. Are you looking to take your business to the next level? I recommend lynda.com courses like WordPress Essential Training, SEO Fundamentals, and a weekly series called Small Business Secrets, where small business coach Dave Crenshaw covers topics like accounting, marketing, management, and more. Whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, each course is structured so you can learn at your own pace and at your own schedule from start to finish. All lynda.com courses are taught by experts who are accomplished professionals at the top of their field. So do something good for yourself in 2015. Sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash TN2. You'll get unlimited access to every course on lynda.com, including access on your iOS and your Android devices, plus new courses as they're added each week. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2 to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead. I challenge you to learn something new. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. GoPro announced fourth quarter earnings, but not while they were skydiving, surfing, or skateboarding, which to me was very disappointing. But thanks to their impressive holiday season, investors were still impressed. The company managed to beat Wall Street forecasts with more than doubled revenue from the year before. The company shipped 22.4 million units during that quarter, up from the 1.42 million shipped during the same period last year. Here is our Go Pro footage of Leo on a drone. That's not actually Leo, but a plastic Leo, or perhaps ceramic. Apple offered today pre-release copies of a new imaging editing, image editing and management application for OS X Yosemite. It's called Photos, and it will replace the current iPhoto app when Apple releases it to the public free sometime this spring. Photos is iCloud-centric, syncing all pictures from your Apple device through the cloud. Pictures from a digital camera loaded into, I into Photos will be synced with iCloud. The new service appears to be a way for Apple to boost iCloud revenue. Photos will not sync with other cloud services like Google Drive or Dropbox. Meanwhile, Apple charges between 99 cents for 20 gigabytes of storage and 19.99 for one terabyte, that's per month. So they're happy to accept very large file formats like raw images. 
In addition to emphasizing cold storage, Photos is intended to make photo editing easy and powerful with a clean, minimalistic interface that takes advantage of trackpad gestures like pinch and zoom and easy-to-apply filters. And speaking of Apple, which we often do, it seems that the company is getting closer to a web TV service. The internet is abuzz with rumors that Apple is preparing to offer a bundle of pay channels, not unlike the Sling TV product from Dish that we reported a few weeks ago. And in other cord cutter news, a new website called Just Watch launched today, calling itself a search engine for streaming media. You can just search for, search for movies for now, but TV shows are coming soon. And GoPro is also joining the party with a new GoPro channel on Roku designed to allow you to watch professionally created GoPro content as well as best of user generated content. And finally, if you watch the Super Bowl, then I think you will agree with me that the best thing about the entire game was the dancing sharks who accompanied Katy Perry on Teenage Dream and California Girls. And those of us who spend way too much time on the internet have enjoyed all of the shark memes this week, including vigorous debates about whether the left shark or the right shark was the better dancer. I think right shark, but you know, you decide. It seems that not everyone is laughing at this, though. According to Gigome, Katy Perry's lawyers have sent a cease and desist letter to Shapeways, an on-demand 3D printing service that offered a 3D printed model of the shark who danced on the left. Fernando Sosa, the model's designer, has since removed the model from Shapeways, but he moved it to MakerBot's Thingiverse, where models are free and must be printed by the downloader. I plan on printing 13 of them right after the show. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us with tips or advice or questions or anything at TN2 at twit.tv and... We like that you watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.